Hi, my name is Brian Hogg. I'm the senior preservation planner in the office of the architect for the university. We're, we're in the middle of a $55 million renovation of the rotunda uh, in advance of the university's bicentennial. And it's a building that's been studied a lot. <laughs> so we believed we knew a lot about it. And finding this uh, chemistry hearth was a real surprise, uh, a good surprise in the best possible way. We were actually in the rotunda. We were, uh, we were in a meeting with the architects and the contractors. And um, the architect from John G. Wade Associates, who, who put his head in the oven, literally wow. looked up and said, there's something up there. And so we, uh, as a group, made the decision to knock a hole in the wall and see what we could find. You know, we're, we, we didn't know what it was at first. We could see that there were finished walls, and um, they had found the little pieces at the bottom, which were the hearth uh, stone, in the 1970s. And they had interpreted those as the entire apparatus. So finding all this stuff above them was a, a real surprise. Well, it would have been used for doing chemical experiments. What we don't know is whether they were, it was used by the professor in teaching or whether this was for his own personal use. It seems kind of small for a demonstration. Um, and we know that Professor Emmett, who was the first professor of natural history, believed that the students should do the experiments themselves, which was a change from the practice at the time, which was to teach by demonstration. So there seem to have been other hearths in this room. So this one, we're beginning to wonder whether it was for him and his own research rather than as part of the teaching apparatus. I think people, there's been a lot of research into the history of chemistry teaching. There is a chemical historical society and there have been books published on it. But this is the first real apparatus that anybody has found. So it lets us see and understand the space and the equipment that people had. We have in Emmett's own hand drawing of things that he ordered to use here. Beakers and pans and pots. So you start associating with those things with it, with the teaching. Then you read Emmett's biography and see how hard it was and how dangerous it was. It was hot, it was smelly, his clothes got burned, he got burned, and it was just, this helps evoke the challenge of teaching science in the early 19th century. Well, this room will be a visitor center and interpretive center when the building reopens, as it had been before the building closed. So we plan to uh, open up this hearth to its original dimensions and restore the exterior, conserve the interior, and have it on view for people coming to the building with some interpretation to explain what it was and, and how it was used. There is a, this kind of semicircular recess in each of the ends of each of these big rooms. And the two on the west side contained all kinds of rubble from the Fought Rotunda fire in 1895 and from the 1970s renovation. And there have been burned pieces of the original Jefferson building found, both wood and metal, and brick fragments. Um, one brick that's quite wonderful it has a dog's paw print in it. So you get the sense of, of the brickyard and what the activity that was going on around the building when, when the buildings were being made. Um, we found walls that we can't explain still. Found footings for a big addition that was built in the 1850s. Uh, I think it's interesting that more of Jefferson's buildings survived fire than we believed originally. Um, we found lots of evidence from the 1850s, and the 1890s, even from the 1970s, a couple of Dr. Pepper cans and things like that. So um, it's, it's been a real treasure trove of evidence and, and the document of the people who worked here and, and used it.